Hi. In this video we are going to have a look at the construction and working of a fuel injection valve. In this exploded view, you can have a look at the different components. We will look at how each of these parts work. Holder The main design features to discuss here are the guide pin on the top, which mates with the bore in the fuel valve head, and guide pin at the bottom which mates with a slot in the fuel nozzle. Spindle guide assembly Here you can see the subtle difference in color between the surfaces highlighted on the left and the surfaces on the right. The surfaces highlighted on the left are sealing and sliding surfaces, hence the polished appearance. In this close-up view, you can look how the components are forming a sliding surface between spindle guide and cutoff shaft, and thrust piece and cutoff shaft. Imperfections like scratches and dents on these surfaces will cause the high-pressure oil to leak into the return side, causing less fuel to be injected. Also notice the conical seating surface between cutoff shaft and spindle guide. Any imperfection on this seating surface will cause the fuel injector to drip, increasing fuel consumption and exhaust temperatures. It should be noted that all the components of the spindle guide are machined to close tolerances and matched with each other, hence the spindle guide needs to be replaced as a whole, and individual parts cannot be interchanged. The thrust piece is pressed into the spindle guide with an interference fit. Cutoff shaft is free to move between the spindle guide seat and thrust piece. Free movement of cutoff shaft must be checked after assembly by shaking the spindle guide and listening for the sound. Here, you can observe the whole pattern of the fuel injector. On the left image, notice the axes of each of the holes are at different angles, to ensure proper mixing of fuel with air. Further in the assembly, we have spring guide, disc, spring and non-return valve assembly. During usage over time, the spring may sag, causing the fuel valve to inject at a pressure lower than expected. In such cases, the disc is added to adjust the opening pressure to the appropriate value. Now, you can see how all the parts interface together and the force of the compressed spring acts on the cutoff slide. In effect, the force of the compressed spring presses the cutoff slide against the seat, and the cutoff slide has to overcome the spring force to lift. Notice the contact surface between the thrust piece and non-return valve body. Leakage from here too will cause less fuel to be injected. These surfaces can be lapped with respective tools as per the maintenance manual to remove any scratches or imperfections. Non-return valve Notice the recirculation hole on the vent slide. Oil is recirculated through this hole when the engine is at standstill. Also, notice the sliding surfaces on the vent slide, and sealing surface of the seat. Note that similar to the spindle guide, parts of the non-return valve except for the spring, cannot be interchanged with each other as they are machined to close tolerances and matched. Hence if needed non-return valve should be replaced whole. Here you can see how the vent slide moves inside the non-return valve. The force of the spring, acts on the vent slide keeping it pressed against the seat. Now if we remove the spring for the sake of demonstration, you can see that the recirculation hole in the vent slide is covered by the thrust piece when it's lifted, and uncovered when it's seated back on the body. Also notice the hole on the non-return valve body, through which recirculated oil flows into the holder. Finalizing the assembly, we have the holder, fuel valve head, and securing screws. Notice the contact surface between the thrust piece and fuel valve head. These surfaces should be checked for imperfections and same can be lapped using their respective tools. Now we will see how fuel is recirculated in the fuel valve. Let's assume that the engine is at a standstill, and the fuel oil supply and booster pumps are running. Fuel enters the fuel through the high pressure pipe, at a pressure of around 8 bar, comes through the vent slide, and exerts pressure on its lower face, that is highlighted in the image. However, the resultant force exerted by the fuel pressure, is not enough to overcome the spring pressure, which is designed to lift at a fuel pressure of 15 to 30 bar. Now, if we remove the spring for the sake of demonstration, we can see that the pressurized fuel flows out through the vent slide hole, into the non-return valve body, and finally into the fuel valve body. 
Finally, fuel flows out through the return pipe. Fuel injection. Let's assume that the engine has started, and the fuel pump is at the beginning of the injection. You can see the high pressure fuel entering through the fuel valve head. This pressurized fuel overcomes the non-return valve spring pressure, and lifts the vent slide. At this point, the recirculation hole in the vent slide is covered, and recirculation is stopped. Now fuel travels through the non-return valve body, and flows into the cutoff slide, acting pressure on its underside. This resultant force will overcome the force exerted by the spring, and lift the cutoff shaft, causing fuel injection. As the fuel injection finishes, you can see that the cutoff slide drops back on the seat due to the spring pressure, and as the pressure further drops, the vent slide seats back on the body uncovering the recirculation hole. 